Welcome to the Bearded Talk podcast, guys. Thank you so much for listening on this wonderful Wednesday or whatever day it is that you're listening. These come out on Wednesdays, but it could be a Tuesday for you. So who knows? Maybe you're ahead of the game or you're behind, but that's totally fine. Anyway, thank you so much for listening, guys. I am super excited for this upcoming episode. We're all about demystifying what it takes to build and run a sustainable and fulfilling business here at the Bearded Talk. And uh, this episode that we have for you with the mans, uh, it's gonna it's just gonna be awesome. Like their work is awesome. People are basically jealous of their lifestyle. They have FOMO uh, when it comes to their lifestyle. But first, just want to make a note. We have a few spots left in the long-term mentorship for 2019, and it is closing soon. Uh, We'll talk more about that at the end of the episode. But if you are interested and want to do it, or have questions about payment plans, etc., and stuff like that, definitely sign up. We will be closing registration in the next few weeks. And uh, yeah, you can go to adamason.com slash education to find out more. And we'd love to have you in long-term mentorship for 2019. But now... We're going to talk about two man or the mans. Uh, (laughs) I would say they're both the mans, but they're not, you know, Erica is a woman. Um, These guys are absolutely incredible. And I can't say enough things to promote them in the good way that I absolutely should. But I think once you just hear them talk for the first five minutes, you'll be blown away. And if you look at their work, it's absolutely mind blowing. So uh, these guys are incredible. And I think this podcast is going to reveal a few things that we never knew about man studios until today and just kind of the nitty gritty of traveling and how to make that work where you can travel around the world as a photographer, which is what these guys have been doing. And they've done it with kids, which is like you get two gold medals, which is an Olympic pun. And turns out that Lanny tried to be going to the Olympics. So yeah, the episode is incredible and just chock full of goodness. So definitely check it out without any further ado. Here's Erica and Lanny man, AKA man studios. Erica, Lanny, how's it going? Hey, good. How are you good. doing? Good. I'm uh, super excited to have you guys on. I um, I have a little story I usually tell about every guest and how I found out about them. But mm. I was looking at... I've had one like photographer hero since I started. And I ended up going to... Uh, do you know Mike Morby? Yeah, I think yeah, you yeah. Know. We love yeah. Mike. He yeah. helped us at a wedding once. And uh, uh, yeah, he's great. That's awesome. That's awesome. He didn't tell me he helped you. He just said that he was in the presence of you guys. Oh, no, like, he, oh. uh, he was he was in the wedding party. No, no, he assisted uh, us at that. Oh, other yeah, and then he did. Yeah, yeah. yeah that's right. Yeah, he, he was to- <laughs> <laughs> he was a groomsman at a wedding that we photographed. At Grace and, and Matt's wedding. Yeah. Right, and then he he did assist us. Yeah, at yeah. a wedding. Yeah, yeah, he was. That's really awesome. Fun. Yeah, he had but to like, he, uh, play couples counselor for us. So. <laughs> I'm totally ready for that. I mean, as wedding photographers, we find out a lot about other couples. Um, <laughs> but yeah, he was uh, he knew the, the, the style I liked and what I was going for. And I love silhouettes. And he was like, have you heard of Man Studios? And this is probably five years ago. And I was like, no. And he showed me your site. And we were literally in his office. And I didn't leave for like the next three hours. And I was just looking through every blog post, like everything. And I was like, oh, wow. this is halfway between like colorful world traveling and like a Chippendales event. This was like, it was pretty awesome. (laughs) Yeah. There is that one wedding that sort of comes across as Chippendale-ish for sure. Yeah. 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 I appreciate it. I mean, I love couples like being themselves and if that was something they are into, then why not? You (laughs) know, why not? not? It was actually a prank on the bride. Oh, that's awesome. One of the groomsmen came up to us and said, as this is after like the parents have left the party, obviously. Sure, sure. He's like, we're gonna come out in our in these tuxedo g strings that we bought and dance around the bride, and we're like, <laughs> yeah, that sounds awesome. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Do it. <laughs> yeah, kind of like photography one on one is just never say no if somebody oh, has a weird thing that's no. gonna happen. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> that is awesome. How is your guys' year? I know you were just in Hong Kong and you guys are back home in Canada. What is what's your end of year looking to shave up like? The end of year, our year has been great. We've had tons of travel. Um, we just put our kids back into school in September. Well, back into real school. Back into real school. So they were traveling with us all over yeah. the world for well for the past two years. So for the first half of this year, uh, we just put them back into school, real school, and uh, we're home for six weeks right now, which is like the highlight for me. I love being at home and cooking and having a bit of a routine. And then what else are we doing? We're going to North Carolina, 
mm-hmm. and Jamaica. And that's super that's, cool. And then we're going to, I just booked us a ski trip for the Christmas break. So it's a pretty awesome end of the year that's coming up. Mm-hmm. That's really cool. Is the ski trip for personal though? You're just like, hey, this is just for us, just yes. as family. Yeah, it's just for us. I just literally booked it right before this. That's yeah, awesome. And it's only 20 <laughs> minutes from our house. It's really not a ski trip, but we live in one of the best <laughs> ski destinations in the world. And uh, it's, well, it's not 20 minutes. It's an hour. But hey, I mean, so. in Canada, that's 20 minutes. Yeah. Especially yeah. that far west. That is, yeah. <laughs> that is so true. That is so true. <laughs> that is really cool. That's mm-hmm. awesome. So I know uh, everybody talks about this, and you guys, literally, like you said, you've been traveling the world forever, it seems like. And, you know, like, how does that work with your kids? We're just going to dive right into that. Like, yeah. you've been homeschooling, or is there online school? Like, what does that look like for you guys? Well, um, depends on the day. <laughs> depends where we where we were, but uh, and, and so where we live here in Canada is totally an option. And and um, I wouldn't it's say an option to homeschool. It's an option to homeschool. Yeah, we've met we've met people uh, around the world where they tell us it's not an option. Like legally, literally, it's illegal <laughs> to not have yeah. your kid in in your kids in public school. So um, I wouldn't say it's super common here. It's still a it's still a minority who choose, but. Um, if you like, you can, you can homeschool your, your kids and there's various options for how you do that. But our intention was always that they would go back into, um, public school. Um, and so we had to like, make sure that, um, we kept up on the curriculum so that they would be able to do that. Right. But the only thing we really kept up on was reading and math. Yeah. Like we Mm. did like an hour of school. Well, we kept up on everything, but those were the the two subjects that we kind of stuck to the curriculum. Um, everything else was kind of just um, the school of life and travel. Yeah, sure. You know, and just trying to make um, whatever we're doing, wherever we are, um, you know, capitalizing mm-hmm. on those those mm-hmm. teachable moments. And, yeah, yeah. But it wasn't without its challenges. I mean, traveling can be stressful, and then traveling and working brings that stress level up a little bit more. And then traveling and working with kids. And then traveling and working with kids and homeschooling, it was, you know, it had its moments for sure. Oh, yeah. um, it was awesome. We pinched ourselves daily. Like, wow, we, how do we get to this place where we're doing this? Like, mm-hmm. it's amazing. We love it. Um, but it also, there was moments of, lots of moments where it's really difficult yeah. as well. And, I mean, at their, at their grades, um, so Timmy would have been, it was grade one and two for Timmy on the road and Madeline was grade four and five. So um, really I would say it was two hours a day max, three or four days a week ish. Um, And that's all it really took to kind of, you know, stay up to speed on the curriculum and get the, the actual kind of school stuff done. Um, Mm -hmm. And then apart from that, it was just kind of the adventure of, of, traveling around the world together mm-hmm. right exploring wherever you're at you know yeah. mm-hmm. that's really cool how long have you guys been traveling before kids like you traveled a lot for working like how long have you guys been in business oh uh well we've been in business well our business is basically the same age as our son so it's 10 uh, almost okay. or nine nine years right <laughs> he's nine uh, years well, old timmy's eight he's turning yeah but nine, he's almost but nine yeah i guess so it's pretty much yeah. nine years old i guess we, we photographed our first wedding uh about 10 years ago yeah, and but didn't really become of a, um, a business. registered business yeah. until yeah. But we've been traveling long before that. That's kind of what got us into photography, really. Um, mm. We but it used to be we traveled for uh, exploration and adventure, and we would right. so we would um, travel to climbing destinations and um, skiing and Mountaineering paddling. And, yeah, yeah, exactly. So. Um, that brought us to like far reaches of the world, places like remote, really remote places like Patagonia, um, where we go on climbing adventures. And, um, and then that was basically what got us into photography because our cameras was really our only way to kind of, um, to try to share, like when we got home to, sh- to share the adventures and the stories with our friends and our, and our family. So basically our cameras became like our, our tools for documenting, um, the adventures that we were living and that kind of like uh, eventually led to somebody asking us to shoot their wedding because we 
kind of knew what we were doing with cameras. <laughs> <laughs> not really. <laughs> but not really. <laughs> we pretended to. Yeah. yeah. I that's still how really it goes. don't know what we're doing too much. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I mean, it's that's kind of the culture we have with worldwide like photographers. It's just we're the new like musician. Like, hey, have you heard of this band? And like 20 years ago, there was probably, you know, 100 bands that people knew and then nobody heard of the others. Whereas like nowadays, there are so many bands and they can all have fans and they can all, you know, make it. And yeah. like photographers right. are kind of the same way where it's like some people have no idea who anybody is. And then to other people, you're a celebrity, you yeah. know, like your, your local yeah. coffee shop might not know you at all, but you go to a photography conference and they're like, Hey, how's it going guys? You yeah. know, like, yeah, it's, it's, it's like so, this little small subculture. Yeah. Everybody is micro famous. Everybody's micro famous. <laughs> <Micro-famous. laughs> That's yeah. a good way of putting it up. That's, <laughs> That's awesome. It's yeah. cool too, especially in this industry that you guys, um, you know, it's really common. You see this like an in Instagram uh, captions and bios where it says like half passport will travel. And, you know, like I think you guys too, it, it's a testament that you guys were traveling before, you know, photography was even a thing for you. And it kind of became this like another thing you had in your pack as you're hiking. And then now it's like you're still adventurers first and then photographers second. And I don't know if that's the case now, uh, at least job wise, but that's really cool. You don't hear that too often. It's usually like, Hey, I have a camera and I want this to take me places, right, which is cool. Right. But. Yeah. No, that's an interesting observation. And I would say like, we used to be adventurers first. Now we're more parents first. And hum- sure. And, and, uh, and humans and then photographers Lovers. sort of fits in that. Now, did it's- you guys do, you know, have you always done, you know, what we would call like destination weddings or did you start out? the first year or so kind of in your local ish area or did somebody see like your hiking stuff from Patagonia was like, Hey, come down here. No, yeah, no, we started off local for sure. Yeah. But we live in one of the most beautiful destinations in the world. Like we, I, I don't want to sound like arrogant, but we do. No, (laughs) do it. It's all good. 20 minutes from skiing. You know, we live in Banff (laughs) national park. Like we're surrounded by Rocky mountains and glaciers. And, and so this is a destination for a lot of people to get me. Totally. Yeah. Um, so local for us, destination for. Yeah. Yeah. So yeah. we do shoot a lot here or we did at least. Um, and then the, the, the destination market sort of organically happened on its own. Um, mm. So much so that we're not shooting locally anymore. And <laughs> so now we're trying to get like, we, we still want to do destination work for sure. Cause it, it keeps, it keeps it really interesting. Like, you know, this year alone we shot, you know, so many different cultures and, and types of weddings. It was fascinating. Mm-hmm. Um, but we would like to be able to sleep in our own bed some nights. So, so we kind of fell sure. off the, the map, fell off the radar locally <laughs> because yeah. we're, we shoot uh, at home so little that we're, you know, no longer really on the map. So. so we're trying to get on the map locally again. But it is interesting. I was thinking about that. Like if you'd asked us, uh, you know, a couple of decades ago, uh, what we would be doing, you know, at this stage in our life and what profession or career path we would, um, we would choose, you know, definitely wedding photographer wouldn't have even, wouldn't have even been a thought, right? Wouldn't or have if, been on the radar. Yeah. Or if you even mentioned it, we kind of would have been like, uh, no, probably not. I can't see that. Or that doesn't sound that alluring. Well, cause we don't really value weddings. Like to be completely mm. honest with you, um, yeah. Not wedding photographers because we value weddings. We value people and relationships and um, storytelling and um, things that come with with yeah. weddings. But in terms of the more traditional style of wedding photography, it doesn't represent anything that we do value, like centerpieces and mason jars and yeah. Um, but where, but where I was going with that oh, is, is that, um, but if you had told me uh, then like, okay, well, envision your life, you know, 15 years from now, what if it told you that your profession was, you know, bringing you all around the world um, for work and you were able to bring your kids with you uh, doing that, I absolutely would have been like, yeah, that sounds, uh, that sounds amazing. I'll do whatever I can to sort of uh, move in that direction. I, I think we kind of just... Um, we, en- we ended up moving in that direction through what all the little decisions and things that we made um, in the career choices and the, and the things that we said yes to and the things that we said no to. And um, so this is kind of where we 
are now where we've ended and up. And a lot of luck. And a lot of luck along the way. But it was never like a, there was never a course that was like, oh, we're going to follow this path so that we can be doing this. It's like we just um, kind of kept, I guess, reacting to things that came our way. Um, and as a result, this is where we are. And we're doing, you know, we're kind of living a life that um, even though we didn't set out for it intentionally, it would have been um, at the time very much what we hoped for yeah and dreamt for mm. yeah and uh, yeah. like a pipe dream that you didn't know that you could have but yeah. it's, it's exactly yeah, like yeah that's something i always tell uh my clients is just like i my mom is a, a hairdresser here in the states and then my stepdad is a master carpenter um and he's a mennonite and so that's like a certain sect of religion that yeah uh was like they build houses in one day and they're known for like not cutting quarter corners yeah. and all that stuff and I'm reading now, a book about Mennonites right now. Oh, that's awesome. Yeah. <laughs> um, I'm sure it's both fascinating and like, what is happening here? It's super um, fascinating, yeah. But they, um, you know, being the son of these two people, I realized that like they loved what they did, but not because of the actual craft. You yeah. know, like my mom loves connecting with people and loving on people. And like when you're getting your hair done, which is not something I do th- that often, but like you feel good, hopefully, and you feel awesome and yeah. you usually had a good conversation. And, yeah. you know, a craftsman like my stepdad is somebody who's building something that will be used and something that will last and, you know, yeah. things like heirlooms and legacy. And for me, it was like, similar to you guys, the the f- photography is just the tool, you know, that yeah. I use to express who I already am. Mm-hmm. And I think a lot of photographers, like, we all get those DMs that are like, hey, what do you think about this camera? And you're like, yeah. I haven't thought about camera stuff in like five years, <laughs> I man. Know. Like, I know. Like my stepdad, and I think like, it takes a certain amount of maturity to realize that, like, and um, that maturity comes from just the mileage of dealing with the everyday struggles of being a photographer. Sure. I that reminds me. I re, someone recently asked me to do a bio for some contest I was doing, and I was like having complete writer's block because <laughs> I was like, you know, when you have to do a bio about yourself. So yeah. then, so I was sat down and I'm like, I was sitting for like half an hour, and I came up with like three words, and I was like, damn it, I can't. And then I'm like, okay, Erica, just pretend, like, just write whatever you want. Pretend that nobody's going to see this bio. And so I came up with this bio that was basically like, my name's Erica. I don't really like photography. I struggle with this, <laughs> this, and this. And uh, I hate this, this, and this. And I question my career choice, blah, blah, blah. And, but in doing so, it made me realize, yeah, the, all the other things that are so much bigger than photography that come with being a photographer, right? Like the connections and the relationships and the making people feel comfortable and all that sort of stuff. So, and Erica already mentioned how, you know, we're not necessarily passionate about weddings or the pageantry of weddings. Um, And I'd even say we're not necessarily passionate about photography. Right. Um, But I've always been passionate about um, pursuing excellence in something, right? Like a lot, you know, I I trained to try to try to qualify for the Olympics for like two decades of my life. Um, and I never, I never made it, but it consumed my life, and and it was like, whoops, sorry, Sammy's mom calling. Yeah, no worries. <laughs> but, and and so then, eventually, photography and wedding photography kind of replaced that in to sort of fill that uh, outlet in my life for you know just kind of working hard at something and trying to achieve your potential and do it to the best, uh, the best of my. Uh, my abilities right and so that's it's not really uh the photography itself or or the excellence itself it's that pursuit of excellence right that striving Mm. to do something to the uh to the highest level you can that is fascinating one what did you try to uh what were you uh, like qualifying for in the olympics for i was well i was a runner a a middle distance and distance runner so track uh track and cross country that's awesome that is super cool my event event would have been um the one that I got closest to um, the Olympics was the steeplechase. Ah, yeah, that is so cool. <laughs> that get, makes you I guys even more to, Canadian. <laughs> yeah, I did get to represent Canada though. I got to go on and race on the international stage in mountain running. I got to go to the World Mountain Running Championships. Dude, that is so cool and so like obscure. We would no, you can't <laughs> even find that on anywhere you guys talk about it. That's awesome. <laughs> yeah, our old but life. I, I th- I think um, something you mentioned too is, yeah, the idea of like knowing how to learn 
and overcome problems, overcome obstacles. Like you had that through that process uh, in kind of the running and track and field and stuff like that. Mm -hmm. And Mm -hmm. now you can just apply that to whatever you do, whether you're a photographer or whether you decided to even switch careers again. And I've seen that a lot. That's something I've actually never had this conversation with anybody, even in the multiple episodes of this podcast is like, I... I originally went to college for guitar. Like I got a scholarship uh, for classical guitar and I'd played guitar since I was 10 and been surrounded by music and was very, it was like my way out of uh, where I lived. And, you know, you devote so much of your time to something uh, for so long and try to pursue this really good track. And like there, you almost like appreciate the discipline or maybe like some of the hard stuff you're like, yeah, it's hard, but, but I, I know it'll be worth it. Yeah. Well, and I think that pursuing mastery in, in anything, whether it's guitar or, or photography or running, is actually a much more boring process than people realize. Mm. And so, yeah, that experience that you have as a classical guitarist, you know. Yeah. Those I mean, life lessons of, you know, working through the boredom. Well, <laughs> yeah. And if, you, if you look at like Malcolm Gladwell's 10,000 hours of practice, yeah. right, like, to achieve mastery, it's, it's like in, in wedding photography, um, you know, it's it, that, that practice it transcends wedding photography. It's your whole life, right? Like, so, you know, we can draw as uh, on our background as athletes and mountaineers, um, sort of that, that devotion and learning how to work hard for something, uh, that you care about. Right. 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 Yeah. It's like, and people don't see too, they think even 10,000 hours and you almost want to tell them, Hey, like 9,000 of these hours were filled with dumb stuff repeated a ton of times oh, yeah. And, yeah. until it was fixed, you know, or until yeah. it was easy stuff, yeah. you know, like yeah. shooting your first silhouette. You're like, you guys are really good at that. And then, Hey, you start figuring these out and sending an invoice and then like all yeah. the things that I'm sure who plans all the logistics for your travel. I'm sure that's gotten easier, but also like, <laughs> Oh, you know, it's oh, still difficult. You'd think it would get easier, but you know, we miss <laughs> at least a plane every year. <laughs> last, last year we missed the plane 20 minutes from the gate. Oh, oh. sorry. 20 meters from the gate. We were at the gate mm. just waiting, doing reading in school. And then 40 minutes later, I'm like, Oh, our plane left 40 minutes ago. <laughs> forgot to, we forgot to adjust our watches. We for forgot the, for to adjust our watches. And so, oh. how much time zone we were in. Yeah, we, we, we're not very good travelers, to be honest. <laughs> That's that's the scoop of this show right now. Is the mans are not good travelers. We Everybody thought they were. <laughs> you should see us in airports. We're, we're like show. yelling at each other. <laughs> you didn't change the the time zone in the Google calendar, and now we missed our flight. Yeah, the kids do better than we do. Oh yeah, the kids are great with them. But right, they're like oh, another thing happening. So yeah. um, something you said a while ago was um, that you guys are trying to you don't shoot local anymore and. Do you think, is that, and you can be practical with me, is that a primarily budget thing or now is it like budget and you're booked already or both? Uh, well, both. We, I mean, we do still shoot local, but it's it's only like one or two uh, out of 15 weddings per year. So it's because up. it's because nobody's inquiring local anymore. Yeah, and that's it's, why. the inquiries have gone down. Yeah. Um, so, I mean, often, yeah, budget or we're already booked is an issue, but um, it's not just the bookings, it's the inquiries. So it's they're not finding us because... I mean, I feel it's just because we're, we only shoot locally um, quite rarely now. So it's really right. like popping up but on there. I wouldn't say it's budget radar. so much because this is a hotbed for mm-hmm. re- very, very big weddings. Right. So right. Um, not that that's who hire us. Um, we, we don't tend to get a lot of the big sort of budget high end weddings, but right. um, it wouldn't be budget. It would just be, the fact that they can't find us. Sure. <laughs> Wait, I mean, it's SEO as well. Yeah. <laughs> I was going to say, I see you guys blogging, but it's probably like a chicken egg situation and yeah. your, your chicken is 10 other places. And so one, the blog's not coming up for local stuff or, you yeah. know, that they're yeah. not seeing it. So that like people don't, again, like we said, you're, you're only micro famous outside of where you're, where you live in Canada. <laughs> yeah. Exactly. Yeah. Well, like, and like we're micro fa- micro famous, you know, uh, quote unquote. Yeah. <laughs> it's photographers, but, but outside of that, um, nobody knows who we are. Nobody knows how to find us, right? Right. There's no caterer that's like, oh, you should hire Erica and Lynn. Like, nope. Yeah. There's no, nobody knows. No. no. That, that is yeah. amazing. Yeah. Uh, that is awesome. So, what does it look like? So, you guys said you take about like 15 weddings, and I love kind of like diving into the nitty gritty, and you can share mm-hmm. as, as much or as little as you guys want to. Um, you know, what does that look like 
as far as the ebbs and flows of income. And then I know you guys do some teaching as well to try and like mm-hmm. even that out. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, like how literally, how does that work? What do you guys need, um, you know, each year, hopefully to try and, you know, whether that's what numbers of weddings or income to, mm-hmm. to try and make the year sustainable or, you know, if you're going to be in a place for a wedding, will you stay there longer than just the wedding and say, hey, we need $5,000 or 5,000 euro to stay here. Like how, how does that whole situation work for yeah. you guys? If you feel comfortable with that. Yeah, no yeah, problem. Yeah. So, well, that's how we originally came up with the, the 15 weddings um, mark is because Lani and I have sort of discovered that we, we can only shoot and edit and deliver a wedding one way, mm. which is our way, all yeah. in, which is all in <laughs> heart and soul, heart and soul. Uh, you know, each wedding for us is probably, if you don't include travel time, at least 120 hours work between the both of us. Mm. <clears throat> and so basically we made the error, which a lot of photographers do of booking too much because you know, it's when you're an entrepreneur, it's hard to say no. Right. Um, so one year we were completely overrun Uh, So we literally just sat down with a pen and paper and figured out how much money we need to live, um, which has gone up significantly since we did that, that spreadsheet, but how much money we need to live, how many hours we want to work, how much time we want to have off in an ideal world yeah, and and how much we have to charge to achieve that. Um, So it was just like straight math equation. And we came up with the number of 15 weddings. Um, and so that's, but this was back when Lanny was also working as a firefighter. So we had, time. yeah, so we did have a supplementary income. Mm. Um, that allowed us to take a lot of um, kind of business risks early on because we could, you know, we weren't relying on, on it 100% for food on the table. Sure. Right? sure. So it's like, well, this is the way we want to run our business. If it's, if it's going to work, it'll work. If not, um, that's okay. And so we were able to, you know, raise our rates maybe a little bit quicker than, um, it might've been a little more scary to do so if, if all our eggs were in that basket. Mm-hmm. Totally. Totally. And I mean, yeah. pre children, no offense to those guys, but I bet it's like, it's now much more practical and you're like, okay, we have to feed four mouths instead of two, yeah. you know, yeah. four flights. Although Lanny counts for two mouths on his own. <laughs> <laughs> um, it's the like Canadian runner gene. Dinner, he orders like two meals. <laughs> I order like two thirty dollar meals, and I'm like, "What are you doing?" <laughs> um, I mean, and the kids are getting more expensive, and yeah. um, quite frank- frankly, Lanny and I are getting more expensive expensive as well. Like, sure. especially with the amount we're traveling these days. Well, we're coming I'm like, from. We're I'm coming like, from. I don't want to fly non business class anymore. <laughs> Right, so, right. There, well, it's, I mean, we were we were climbing dirt bags and ski bums, and we sleep under bridges when we travel. And oh yeah, this. we'd we'd sleep out. So I remember this one time we were in Patagonia, and we slept in the shed in the back with beside of the a, beside a bunch of mothballs because it changed. You know, it was six dollars less a night <laughs> for the hostel. Yeah. For the hostel, and now I'm like, no, no, yeah. can't do that anymore. Yeah. So, so we're becoming more expensive as well. So, um, but our, our wedding rates, they do fluctuate. Uh, they fluctuate depending on the amount of inquiries that come in. Um, our conversion rate is basically about 3%. So the amount of inquiries that we get, we convert about 3% of those into actual bookings. Yeah. So if our inquiries go down, our rates might go down a little bit so that our conversion rate goes up yeah. and then vice versa. If our inquiries start going up, then we, our rates go up so that our conversion rate is, is less so that we're hitting that 15. Yeah. And that, and that 15 kind of works out. Like we've never really had to say no, we don't really, you know, we don't fire our, our, our clients. It's, it's generally, it's the price thing and whether or not they figure out if we're a good match or not um, sure. versus, versus us. So we just, we're just super transparent about our, our, our approach and our process and in explaining that even before they hire us. Um, and, it, and basically, it works out to around with that 3% conversion rate, 15 per year, which is mm-hmm. kind of the sweet spot for us. 12 to 15 is where we want it. Mm-hmm. Totally. Because that's what we can handle. Right. Really. No, that makes yeah. sense. And I mean, it's something we talked about earlier, but like, it's not just um, 
you know, clients that have the budget, it's clients that have prioritized having yes. you at their wedding or prioritized yeah. photography. And oh, exactly. like, absolutely. Yeah. Like, like we've, we've had, we've had clients where we're literally 80% of the entire budget. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Exactly. Yes. And the idea too, is for you guys to make it, you know, not that you have to think this way at all, but it ends up looking, you know, like a, a, a wedding where you couldn't guess the budget. You're just like, wow, this is yeah. awesome. This is really cool. Yeah, and exactly. Exactly. usually those photos are like, Hey, this didn't matter at all. Like you can, you know, just, as long as it's shot well and the people are having fun, like it doesn't even matter. Yeah. Uh, yeah. That, that's awesome. I love that. Now, mm. Erica, give me like your favorite, you know, travel tip or what you're trying to do whenever you're going to like book strategically. Like, will you only kind of like, I'm sure you've done the math, those 12 to 15 weddings where that, you know, one is kind of overlapping. Like you're not necessarily saying, and maybe you do this differently. Like one flight is coming directly from, that particular client or does it kind of overlap, you know, like how you guys pay for it and how you guys plan that? Oh, uh, like in terms of what we charge, we, the clients, sorry, I don't sure. Yeah, yeah, so the client, the clients, the clients, um, uh, have to cover the airfare sure. yeah, on top of the, the normal rate basically. Yes. So yeah. I nice. mean, um, we, and we book our own flights. So okay. that we can get the yeah. point. It's, it's, it was a little bit different the last couple of years because we were, um, we had the kids with us. So we would often kind of, rather than just, in and out um, to get back home to the kids, we would uh, stay longer, right? And then it's like, okay, well, we're, we have to be here for this wedding, and then a few weeks later, we have to be there for this uh, workshop, for example. Right. And we would, because we had the kids, we would um, arrange things a little bit differently that way. And you know, sometimes we'd have um, we, we'd have the clients uh, from a wedding paying for the flights, but it depends where we were in the world, right? Totally, totally. Yeah. yeah, yeah. But but now now the kids are back in school. Unless we're bring, we're bringing them with us, um, it's kind of in and out, uh, and so they they just it's just a straightforward airfare. Mm-hmm. Right. You're not trying to stay an extra week just for fun. Cause you're like, hey, we have we have no. jobs back at home. Again, yeah. our kids. Yeah. <laughs> we're not going to do that unless the kids are with us, and we still bring them. Um, this year, they're going to miss quite a bit of school, um, so that they can travel with us uh, for a few of them. Totally, totally. What's been the biggest struggle traveling either with kids or just in general for work as much as you guys do, especially in the last two years? The biggest struggle. Mm. Other than missing that one flight. <laughs> yeah, oh, yeah, missing, those are, yeah. Those are str- uh, the biggest struggle. I'd say just the, uh, the challenges of being um, together in close quarters, yeah. high stress situations, 24 seven. Oh yeah. Right. With, with little, little escape. Yeah. We're in, we're in, Airports and small hotel, small rooms. hotel rooms, and it's hard on it's hard to get like for Lanny and I to get time as a couple <laughs> when mm. you're traveling with the family. Yeah, for sure. Um, and and just and even just staying on top of the workflow, right? Like um, for our clients and and our students, when we're you know we've got the kids with us and we're you know we're touristing and and uh, but we've got uh, got clients and editing and everything else to stay on top of. So it's like keeping all those plates spinning, uh, while keeping the family happy and, uh, trying to stay healthy. Functional and, yeah. Yeah. Trying to stay fit. And I don't healthy know if there's on one the biggest challenge. I'd say the biggest one would be probably, uh, many people's biggest challenge. And maybe this is taboo to say, but it, maintaining a good re- a good marital relationship. I mean, it's sure. hard. Mm-hmm. Marriage is a hard um, endeavor, right? It, right. it is. Um, it, it's worthwhile in every way. But I don't, I think that's a challenge no matter if you're traveling the world or you're staying at home. If yeah. you're working together or you're not working together, I think it's always going to be just a, a yeah. challenge. I think because it, it, it's easy to sort of look at our challenges and, um, how stressful it can be to be working together and um, and doing everything together and teaching and shooting together and but but then realize that if we weren't doing all this together we would just be we just have different challenges different struggles mm-hmm. we'd be fighting yeah. about something else right yeah. that we that we don't understand each other's career and we don't have that in common so right no absolutely that makes sense it's like people a lot of couples that shoot and travel and explore all the time you see these photos of them and they're super smiling and you're like. Guys, when was your last fight? Or what was the last thing you guys argued about? And it was something silly or mundane or whatever, you know? Right. Because it doesn't matter in, in the grand scheme of things. But it's like your marriage is put through, 
you know, different variables, you know, whether you guys go to Hong Kong or Canada or wherever, it's like there are different obstacles to face. And like, I always joke with couples, like going on a road trip, if you will, you know, is always like this, oh, can you spend every waking moment in the car with this person? And, you know, little things like smells and sounds and then big things like, oh, I found out her philosophy was different than mine. You know what is so funny right now is that you said smells and sounds. (laughs) Because if you were on video with us right now, like, you would not like Lanny is Lanny's breath is so bad right now. And my head is so close to him <laughs> and he's like, literally, I just gave him a mint. Cause I'm like, <laughs> I can't stand like, it's like, I'm having to like hold my hand up as a barrier. I'm holding my hands up. As a barrier. And, yeah. <laughs> so he's trying yes. to do his best to help but out. I still love him. Right. Yeah. I mean, these are the champ. I mean, it's just a chance. Yeah. Doing this so what I think thing. is it too much coffee. Ew, coffee it's breath disgusting. and <laughs> Yeah, you need to eat. Your mouth smells like. Well, I won't say what it smells like. Uh, but I think what I'm trying to say, Adam, is that like, ja- like traveling definitely comes with its challenges. But I don't think they're that different from everyday life challenges. To be mm-hmm. quite honest, like I think, I think the everyday life challenges of of you know family and marriage and life balance doesn't change when you're traveling. <laughs> yeah. Right. And there's, and there's awesome things that come with every day, you know, being at home, like travels made us really appreciate home, being home, having our own place. And the kids love having their own stuff and, and routine and things that we miss, miss out on when we're traveling. But then traveling with all those challenges also comes with some pretty awesome things, right? Like mm-hmm. every day we pinch ourselves at where we are and what we're doing. Yeah. Totally. And I mean, those guys get to learn one homeschool through teachers that, you know, like you said, it only takes an hour into somebody that might seem crazy, but one, their teacher knows them Two, the teacher is, you know, their parents and three, like you only have to teach one person that subject for the day, you know, or, or that content. Uh, yeah. Now I will say they are much better behaved for their actual teachers than they are for me. Timmy learns way better in actual school than he does with me. Mm, well, the yeah. academics, the Academically, curriculum, yeah. sure structure. Yeah. They, yeah. I mean, we we saw, uh, you know, traveling with them. We saw their learning through play uh, oh, yeah. every day, everywhere. Like they, they, they need so nothing. Uh, you know, they sticks and rocks and beach and sand and water and and just just life. And they basically the things they're learning, they kind of um, solidify through through play. And they had one of the advantages was that they had so much time um, to play, right? Whereas we're realizing now in, re- in real school, which comes with lots of pros, one of the drawbacks is, is they've lost a lot of that, that free time to just play and just be with themselves and their imagination because so much of the, the hours in the day are structured between school and, and, and after school activities and whatnot. So... Mm-hmm. Right. No, that makes sense. It's definitely going to be tough for those guys for sure. And, uh, you know, trying to figure it all out. Mm-hmm. Definitely. Mm-hmm. <laughs> they're, good. That's awesome. they're good. Oh yeah. It's not yeah. tough. They're, no, they're, they're, they like being back in real school. Yeah. They like having friends and, uh, and yeah. <laughs> the novelty of, uh, the novelty of it is wearing off a little bit. The first couple of weeks they were super stoked in real school. Yeah. The honeymoon um, period. The honeymoon, yeah. Now they're kind of real. The days seem really long. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, are they uh no time to play Lego at night. Yeah, They're what's their thing? Sleep. <laughs> is like uh is Lego what they bring or do they you know do they have do they have phones or iPods or anything oh, yet? Like what's their thing when they travel? travel? They yeah. just bring uh no, they just play with whatever is there. Yeah, Lego really at home. They bring a backpack each. So they'll have a journal and some pencil crayons and col- um sketchbooks and they read and yeah, and they, they, they do each they, have a, an, an iPad mini, but really the only time we ever use that is on the flights. Yeah, sure. They have sure. a foot. They, we allow them to use the tablet on the flight and that's all. <laughs> right. Yeah. Right. No, that makes sense. Now we're both you guys, we're going to get a little nitty gritty here, but like sure. we're both you guys, were your parents adventurers? Did your parents travel or did they not travel? And that made you want to go explore more? Like mm. what do you think made you guys kind of like hungry for adventure, if you will? Ooh. Or was it just living in Banff? I mean, that's pretty awesome. No, spot. Well, we moved here um, because it was more the chicken and the egg. The, the zest for adventure came and that's what brought us here. Uh, mm. We moved from Calgary out to, to Canmore because 
this is where this is in the heart of all you know all the pursuits that we were doing at the yeah. time um, in the mountains. I wouldn't mm. say I wouldn't say my parents are unadventurous. I wouldn't describe them as adventurous, but they're not unadventurous mine either. Pretty, like my mom had six kids. That's there's nothing more adventurous <laughs> than bringing six children into the world. Yeah. <laughs> in my opinion, like they're just adventurous in different ways. Mm. Um, you know, like yeah. seriously, imagine raising six kids. <laughs> you know, like that's that's adventure at the very core. Um, but just a different facet of it. Yeah, totally. I don't know where the zest for adventure came from. It's just in there. Mm. My parents weren't uh, necessarily adventurous. No, I would, say, adventurous. I would say, yeah, no, <laughs> I would say, yeah, actually, yeah, I wouldn't, I would describe would, yeah, I wouldn't describe your parents as adventurous, but they foster adventure in their children. Mm-hmm. Mm. Yeah, for sure. Okay. That's yeah. awesome. Do you think you guys try and do that for your guys? Obviously, you know, practically, but just, you know, as far as, like how you guys teach them and speak to them, I assume. Uh, yeah, I mean, I we, wouldn't say it's conscious. You know, I wouldn't say we right. say consciously to instill adventure. It no. just kind of comes through osmosis of us being us, who we are, and, yeah. and the things we value, and and then so the things that we do with them, right? It's and so through that, um, hopefully, they're going to become whoever they're going to become, and and uh, you know, maybe they're very adventurous, or or maybe not. Right. Right. Like something's happening either way, you know, for sure in their, in their little minds. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> now, w- when you guys are traveling, especially around the world the past few years, is that, you know, would you guys say, hey, we're going to have one day that's adventure and one day, you know, we're going to see these things. And one day is kind of like a catch up home day. Like, are Definitely, there certain yeah. things? Well, yeah, you- we started uh, basically scheduling downtime instead of scheduling uptime. Like most people mm. schedule their travels around, um, uh, you know, things that they're going to do and see, whereas we would schedule all the travels around when we're going to do nothing. Like we, you know, um, so for example, like we spent 10 days in Italy mm-hmm. and we just decided to spend all 10 days in one place because it gets exhausting just moving to a different location every day. Right. Totally. So we schedule, we make sure we schedule a lot of downtime and a lot of just hanging out, being a family, not feeling like we have to go and see every museum and every walk and every mountain and all that sort of stuff. But if we don't schedule it, we feel like this intense, um, um, pressure to go and do it all. Cause we're like, well, we don't know when we'll be back in Amsterdam again. So we have to go see this, 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 and this. Um, whereas if we schedule the downtime and make sure that we don't do everything, we, we can sort of lower that anxiety. <laughs> right, right. Yeah. You're like, we have a lunch date with nothing today. So yes. that's what we're doing. Yeah. yeah. And the kids really appreciate that too. And we have quite a few family we, meetings along the way, you know, what's mm. working, what's not. And the sure. kids, one of the things they really wanted was more downtime, like just more time to play with their stuffies. And they get lost in these really crazy imaginary games that last days with these really intense narratives and these imaginary worlds. And um, if they were here right now, they'd be giving me shit for saying it's imaginary because to them it is so real. Yeah. And um, they just love that. Mm -hmm. Like they don't, they don't need to go see, you know, the Eiffel tower or whatever Mm -hmm. to get enjoyment out of it. Yeah. Yeah. When we asked them like, what are some of your favorite travel memories? Like of all the countries we've gone to and all the trips we've done, what are the ones that, they uh, they remember or pick as their favorites, and it seems to be the ones where we've done the the camper van thing, or the uh, the RV where we basically rented a rented a van and and spent two or three or four weeks just touring around the country, and um, a whole lot of nothing really camping and yeah a whole lot of nothing right and because I think they have all that time you know just you know on the road in the back of the van um, mm. and at the campgrounds to just kind of play and explore and use your imagination and just kind of be wild and free. And right, that's what totally. they, they love. Uh, they love those kind of trips, that kind of travel. Yeah. Mm. It's like they get, uh, they love like the journey. It literally the journey, like, Hey, we're going from A to Z and we care about, you know, they love the time in between. And you guys are yeah. thinking, let's just get yeah. to Z. Like yeah. things would be awesome yeah, when we get exactly. to Z. Yeah. And yeah. They, they don't love the, the, the journey. They like um, planes. A to Z when it's, um, three connecting flights 
oh. two continents and yeah. like 28 hours to get from. <laughs> Although know. they do better than they, we do. Yeah. Oh yeah, and they and they handle the the jet lag much better than we do. Oh, okay. <laughs> and kids are usually just physically smaller. Like some of those international planes, if uh, you've got yeah. wide shoulders mm-hmm. or you're sick of people, it's yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Timmy describes the planes as really cozy. He loves them. Yeah. That is oh. hilarious. The yeah. long I haven't flown as long as you guys have. I did, um, but I have done some work in Ethiopia and from yeah. DC. Mm-hmm. They have a direct flight, and it's oh, seventeen wow. hours in the air. Seventeen um, hours, yeah, and, and it's. They like it hot, so they don't turn on the AC. Oh, man. And, and two hours in, I'm like, all right, I'm ready to be done. And uh, you have to be really focused to kind of like get through it because you're just uh-huh. like, okay, I'm ready to be out of here. Oh, I know. Uh, yeah. I know. Yeah. You like, can't get rather... in that mindset too soon, else you like go crazy. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Exactly. Yeah. Awesome. Uh, one little practical thing. Do you guys do everything in-house? Do you edit everything yourselves, plan everything, etc.? cetera? Uh, we outsource lots of our editing, like our Lightroom editing to in sure, this sure. one. Um, nice. Yeah. And then, but everything that's sort of on our website and our blog and then the slideshows that we deliver to the clients, Instagram, all that sort of stuff is edited in house. Totally. By totally. Lanny. Lanny's, Lanny's and the editor. Maria. Oh, and then we have Maria. Maria, Maria oh, is yeah, kind Maria's of our, name. she's, She's ground control. We basically hired, we needed a boss. So we hired a boss. <laughs> yeah. That's awesome. Our boss. She's our boss. She kind yeah. of uh, basically takes care of all the administrative um, side of things. And so all of the inquiries come through her. She kind of uh, works our schedule and our calendar um, and gets us to-do lists, like weekly to-do lists. Yes. Yeah. This is what workflow. you have to yeah, do Yeah, she kind of manages our whole workflow and, and she's kind of in charge of the whole client experience, making sure that we um, give all our clients the, you know, the top-notch experience that we can. And totally. she also helps us organize the, the logistics for all of our all of our international workshops and stuff, which is a big job. Yeah, that's awesome. That's awesome. And I mean, to make sure that if your guys' flight is delayed, you know, she's still she's not missing an email or oh, something exactly. during exactly. time. Yeah. And yeah, it's literally practical as well as it is yeah. you know helpful. Yeah, in oh, your she's journey, amazing sure. too. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, she does. Uh, she helps out with some of our social media, like Instagram and. Yeah. Keeps keeps a lot of those plates spinning for us. And she's but, like, we intentionally hired her, someone, her specifically, because she was so different from us. Like, because mm, she is yeah. like everything that we're not. She's like super organized and professional and <laughs> um, type efficient. A, as we would say here. Efficient. <laughs> like, well, I'm pretty efficient. Yeah, you are. But, um, you know, we just, she has all the traits that we're lacking. Mm, sure. Yeah. Complimentary yeah. to, to the business. Yeah, yeah. totally. No, that, that's super useful. Mm-hmm. One last thing for you guys, like, tell me a little bit more about the workshops. Is that kind of you'll plan one wherever you're having a wedding or I know you guys get invited to speak all the time too. Yeah. you know, like how, will, how does that work? Or you do that intentionally and say, Hey, we're coming to Bali and we want to do a workshop <laughs> in Bali. Well, it's a little bit of everything. So, uh, you know, sometimes we get asked to speak at a conference and, um, it's very hard. Conferences, conference organizers have a very difficult job because they've got a lot of expenses. And um, frankly, you know, usually they can't, they can't pay us enough money to be there to, right. you know, to, to cover sense, yeah. for it to make a financial sense for us to go there. Um, but, it, but we still want to speak at them and we still want to support what they're doing in the community, which is sharing knowledge and creating, um, uh, uh, relationships and connections. And um, so sometimes what we'll do is we'll say yes to a conference as long as we can run a workshop there as well. And then it makes more fun. It makes sense emotionally, yeah. but it also makes sense financially for us to go there. Plus we just love teaching. Like it's, mm. I would say Lanny specifically, like just loves that's his passion is, is teaching and sharing and um Mm-hmm. Right. Yeah. Totally. I'd say I'd say even more so than photography, well, particularly wedding photography. Yeah. <laughs> in particular, um, it's uh, the educational side of things. Yeah. It's, I find it um, uh, more fulfilling. Mm-hmm. It's also determined by where there's a lot of you know we get probably we get more workshop inquiries than we get wedding inquiries, probably two mm. or three a day. Um, so if there's a lot of people in Asia. That re- inquiring for workshops, which there are, we'll be like, well, let's go to Bali for spring break. 
Yeah. <laughs> we'll we'll bring the kids along and we'll do a workshop there and then we'll we'll spend a month touring yeah, around. We've as also well. we've also done it cases where we're traveling for a wedding. Like for for example, like coming up the North Carolina and Jamaica are both our two next weddings. Yeah. And so both of them were kind of piggybacking with a workshop while we're there. Um, mm-hmm. just because it kind of helps us uh kind of justify the travel a little bit more. Well, and we can yeah, like we can pass that savings on to our client as well. Like yeah. we're going to cover our own travel because we're, yeah. yeah. So totally, totally. Yeah. No, I love that. And I mean, I bet Lanny loves teaching because he also loves learning. Like he's been a student, you know, of yeah. different, two different mm-hmm. trades now, yeah. you know, so that's awesome. Well, that's, that's the so best cool. way to learn is, is to teach. Honestly, like when, when we first started teaching photography is the, when we first actually thought about, okay, what is it that we're actually doing and what, like, what's working um, mm. And then, so every time we, we kind of teach it, um, it it's like um, Reaffirm. reaffirming it and, and driving it in uh, on a deeper level. And um, so I think we started to become, uh, we started to improve and grow as photographers at a faster rate once we started teaching it. Mm-hmm. Mm. Yeah. I love that. Yeah. I love that. Awesome, guys. Well, hey, thank you so much for coming on. And thank uh, you. where can people go to find out information on the next workshop and see all your best stuff? Like, we'll link it in the show notes, but feel free to shout out anything you guys have going on. There's a group. There, there is a group uh, called the on Two, Facebook, Men Workshop Two Men Workshop News. Yeah. And usually we'll announce uh, upcoming workshops in there first. Uh, so that's, that's, the, that's the place to be for that. Yeah. And then, yeah, and then the other thing I'll mention, which is something I do separately from Lanny, is um, I run a. I'm giving it up this year, but someone else is taking it over. A good friend of mine. I run a a, a conference, a photography conference, just for women, mm. and it's called Real Life. It's called the Real Life Photography Conference, and it's uh, all different photographers of all different genres. Um, and I'd say it's impacted my photography and the trajectory of, of where I'm going with it more than any other, mm. any other thing in the past couple of years. That's exciting. That's awesome. All mm-hmm. ladies, mm-hmm. all ladies. That's so yeah. cool. Yeah. That's awesome. I'm not allowed. Yeah. <laughs> it sounds like an amazing conference. It is an amazing conference. <laughs> it's a very different space. Um, with it being all women, to be honest. Um, totally. There seems to be a lot less. I, well, you mentioned it, you know, earlier about the the micro famous mm, yeah. sort of thing that happens in photography. It's very often rock stars, and not it feels like people trying to be rock stars, but yeah. we're all really just photographers, right? Yeah. Um, and so we've really made a huge effort, sort of, just to take that completely out of the equation with this conference. And there's really no no discernible difference between the speakers and the attendees. Mm, I love that. The guys are like, yeah. there's rock stars and peasants and the ladies are all queens. They're just like, hey, we have this all together. <laughs> yeah. So yeah. that's awesome. <laughs> yeah. That's really cool. Hey, I mean, yeah. I bet it's a hundred percent like more supportive and more fun. And yeah, <laughs> that's why Lan- well, Lanny and I are jealous. Fun, but it's definitely like, it's just a, a safer space as well. Mm, I mean, yeah, there, there's, um, you know, sexism exists everywhere in our society. Um, totally. But it, it does seem to exist a little bit more in the technical sort of jobs like photography yeah. and tech industry. Um, event spaces, yeah. Event spaces, especially, you know, with who's represented at the top of the industry. And so this was just a space to to showcase all the amazing woman talent out there and hopefully achieve more quality um, yeah. in the long run. That's yeah. awesome. That's awesome. Super exciting. Yeah. I will link all of that in the show notes because that is super fun and want to support you guys as much as possible. So seriously, awesome. thank, thank you guys you. seriously for coming yes. on and uh, hopefully I'll see you guys somewhere in the world. And, yes, uh, we can we'd love to see you in DC if we go there again. Like we'll definitely look you up. Yeah, and, absolutely. I'll take um, you out to all the fun stuff and food. I want to and, see your beard uh, in person. Yeah. <laughs> <Yes>. <laughs> I have never heard that before. Uh, at least said that way and that makes me really happy. So that's awesome. You guys <laughs> oh, made my I day. really do. Really do. I love it. Awesome, guys. Well, hey, have a wonderful day. And uh, seriously, thank you guys so much. And I'll tell Mike you guys said hi. (laughs) Oh, yes, do. Oh, man. Everybody knows that I freaking love Man Studios. And I've been following the work for a long time. And I was kind of nervous that we weren't going to be able to get them on. Like, like they, you know, podcasts are free versus having you come to speak at a conference. It costs money. But um, 
you know, this little little podcast that we have going on this little community is finally grabbing some of my heroes and it's super exciting. And I love like the whole range of topics we talked about with these guys. That's kind of the goal for me of this podcast is to just show, you know, how does how do the mans feel about a certain topic? How do they cover their travel? How do they do? What are those little tiny questions that like they're not going to answer in a workshop, not because they don't want to, but because it's not something that kind of fits through a curriculum. And so we got to kind of like punch in a few different topics. And I love that. And so cool. And also, I had no idea that Lanny was basically like an international running star, essentially representing Canada, which is really cool. Anyway, I'm battling. Love those guys. Definitely check out those links. And if you're a lady, try and go to that conference. Erica is incredible. And I'm sure the other speaker lineup is super awesome. So definitely hit those guys in the show notes and you have to see their work, of course. And uh, yeah, if you love traveling and want to figure out how to do it, like definitely reach out to them and see what they can do for you guys. So speaking of learning, one of the things that we still have a few spots left, just a few, is long-term mentorship for 2019. That is closing soon. Closing it, it closes at November 7th is when we are closing registration for the 2019 year. If you want to sign up or are interested in sign up, want more information, just shoot me an email, thebeardedtog at gmail.com, or you can go to adamason.com slash education. And uh, we'd love to have you for 2019 and see if we can take your business to the next level. And yeah, we are super excited. Thank you guys so much for listening to The Bearded Tog. Have a wonderful day and keep being awesome. Thank you so much. Thank you so much.